welcome back to the lectures on quantum mechanics and quantum chemistry. In the past few lectures, we have been concerned with the basic mathematics of quantum chemistry or quantum mechanics. In the last couple of lectures, we have been looking at the differential equation method for solving some of the model problems. And uh, one of the most important problems the, as a model in quantum mechanics is the model of harmonic oscillator. And we were looking at the Hermite polynomials and the solution of the Hermite equation, which leads to Hermite polynomials and so on. And uh, by the end of the lecture, I made some statements regarding the uh, special nature of these polynomial solutions to the harmonic oscillator. In the first part of today's lecture of this lecture, we shall see a little more on the mathematics and also the physical consequences. But harmonic oscillator problem will also be done in this course by using another method known as the operator method. And therefore, without uh, spending too much time on the physical consequences, we will wait until that part is done when the entire harmonic oscillator model will be dealt with in detail. But in today's lecture, we shall look at again the functions that we wrote down and the energy level expressions that we had for the harmonic oscillator. The first thing is if you recall H psi is equal to E psi for harmonic oscillator becomes minus h bar square by 2 m d square psi by d x square plus half k x square psi is equal to e psi. And psi is a function of x, is a function of x. Okay. And we solved this by writing psi of x as indexed by an integer n psi n of x and we wrote down the solution as a normalization constant which is specific to the n an exponential minus alpha x square by 2 and a Hermite polynomial of root alpha x. Okay. x is the position coordinate or is it the amplitude of the oscillator about the equilibrium value x naught, which we did not include, we assume that to be 0. And therefore, the dimension of x is the length and root alpha has the dimension 1 over length. And the energy level expression for this was also written in the last lecture as h nu into n plus a half. where nu was written as 1 by 2 pi square root of k by m. Okay. You recall that we had polynomials which had odd or even character depending on the value of n, n being an integer. Odd n meant that the polynomials were odd functions even n meant that the polynomials were even functions. Okay. But they were polynomials with a leading term of x raised to n for a given n. Therefore, the functions increase as x increases. What works against them is this exponential to ensure that the wave function actually goes to 0 at x is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity uh, and plus infinity. This is our boundary condition or the domain of x. Okay. And we had psi of x goes to 0 as x goes to plus or minus infinity. Psi of x also goes to 0 at some finite points also at 
a number of points in between or number of values of x. Those values are called nodes of the function. They are called nodes of the function. They do not really mean anything except that the probability of finding the system very near the node is very small because the probability depends on size squared and the probability is never given at a particular point for a continuous system. It is in a small domain and therefore, around the nodes in a small interval the probability is very low. Otherwise, the nodes have no other role as far as uh, this particular course is concerned. Okay. But what is interesting is that the classical model of the harmonic oscillator, if you remember and if you write the coordinate, the position coordinate or the amplitude as plus and minus infinity. The potential energy half k x square, if we write V of x, the potential energy is a nice parabola. Well, not really, this side is not that even. Let us see if I can do it somewhat. Okay. Uh, this width k is, is a, this width is a function of the k. So, if k is very large, this is a narrower parabola. If k is very small, this is a shallower broader parabola, which is an indication of how much the potential energy is binding the pair of atoms in the case of a harmonic oscillator model for a diatomic molecule, how closely or how rigid the atoms are as a spring, as a molecular spring. So, a tighter or a very high uh, value for the bond energy means a large value for k and therefore, this potential energy is for a k much larger than the k that I have drawn, this potential energy will look something like this. For a k which is very loose, for a non-rigid molecule where the vibrational amplitude can be very large and the bond energy can be very significantly small, the k will be different. So, the parabolic nature of the potential energy is also indicative of the molecular system that we are uh, looking at, whether the molecule has a, uh, the, the bond, bond is a very strong bond or is it a floppy or a weak bond and so on. So, that is the association of the harmonic model to the bond of a diatomic molecule during the molecular vibrations. Now, what this means that is the energy E n h nu is equal to n plus a half means is that even when n is 0, even when the quantum number n, please remember this n came from the fact that some lambda by alpha minus 1 was put equal to 2 n and this lambda and alpha were constants associated with the mass and the uh, force constant. Okay. So, the physical parameter has led to the quantum condition in order for the wave function to be meaningful and when n is 0, you still have an energy E 0 which is half h nu. If we mark this on a scale here, with this as 0, we have half h nu, so scale of energy, total energy and n equal to 1, n equal to 0, the quantum number n equal to 0. For the quantum number n equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, etcetera, you can see successively that it is 3 halves, 5 halves, 7 halves, 9 halves and so on. Therefore, the harmonic oscillator model gives rise to energies 
which are equidistant, okay, roughly okay, 3 by 2 h nu, 5 by 2 h nu, 7 by 2 h nu, 9 by 2 h nu and so on n equal to 1, n equal to 2, n equal to 3, 4 and so on. The eigenvalues, remember h psi is equal to e psi is an eigenvalue equation and for this we have obtained the solution h psi n of x is equal to e n psi n of x where psi n and e n were obtained already. The eigenvalues and eigenfunctions, the eigenvalues are discrete, the eigenfunctions correspond to the eigenvalues, they are non degenerate. There is one eigenfunction for one eigenvalue. This is a one dimensional model, okay. no degeneracy whatsoever. Therefore, the harmonic oscillator energy levels are non degenerate and the wave function associated with this is psi 1 of x, this is psi 0 of x, psi 2 of x, psi 3 of x and so on. If you look at the function carefully and if you also look at the classical expression for the potential energy, you see that the potential energy is binding half k x square. Now, at any extreme points if we take this x max for this energy, this v and at that way the energy, this energy if we take it as a total energy, it is easy to see that the potential energy here as marked by this value half k x square x max, x max is the potential energy is equal to the total energy and the oscillator has zero kinetic energy. That is what is true at the extreme ends of the oscillator. The oscillator goes to zero kinetic energy, then the potential energy is the driving force for it to come back and at this point where the amplitude is zero, the oscillator has zero potential energy but has maximum kinetic energy and therefore at this point the total energy is all kinetic energy. So, you can consider in a classical system the energy to be any value continuous either this or this or this. Okay. The potential energy which is the maximum at this point is the total energy and all energies in between, between these two extremes that is the here, all these energies are now sums of the potential and kinetic energy such that the total energy is this or if you take this length the total energy is E and so on. Any arbitrary value is possible here, no. The harmonic oscillator energy is given by a specific quantity n plus a half times h nu. Okay. So, that is discretization or that is a quantization. The second part is that with the wave functions. Let us draw it here itself. Let us take the first wave function, the 0 quantum number wave function corresponding to the n value n equal to 0, psi 0 of x is uh, I believe alpha by pi not square root sorry alpha by pi to the 1 by 4. e to the minus alpha x square by 2 and e 0 is half h nu. Okay. Now, the plot of that function psi of x 
we do that okay as a function of x positive and negative we let us mark the potential energy half k x square which we can always write uh, as a classical form for any value of k. Of course, k fixes this nu therefore, k and nu are related to each other. So, for that particular energy let us write the half k x square let us draw the half k x square as Well, that is ok, that looks all right. Now, let us mark the energy half h nu as this, therefore, the energy level is that, it is E is equal to h nu. Okay. If we plot the function e to the minus alpha x square by 2, this is x is equal to 0 the function is maximum given by root alpha by pi to the 1 by 4. So, if you mark that, okay. since the Hermit polynomial associated with psi 0 is a constant and there are no contributions, the function is a simple Gaussian and it goes on like that. I have drawn all these things using the mathematical formula or uh, program drawing program such as uh, maple or mathematica. In my lecture notes you will find all these things drawn to scale. Okay. This is psi of x. If we plot psi squared of x in the same graph, psi squared phi naught squared of x is alpha by pi to 1 by 2 e to the minus alpha x square. So, it is a slightly narrower Gaussian because uh, the coefficient on the exponent is large, but it is alpha by pi to the 1 half. So, something like this you can if you do that the graph looks more like that. Okay. Important, the square of the function outside of the classical potential barrier maximum value of the potential where for this value this potential energy corresponds to the total energy and therefore, in a classical model any potential energy uh, any uh, value of x larger x corresponds to the corresponding potential energy of half k x square here and that means the kinetic energy for the classical system is negative which is not permitted. Okay. Quantum mechanics tells you that it is possible for us to find the harmonic oscillator outside of the classically forbidden potential barrier because of the finiteness of the absolute square of the wave functions outside the potential limits, maximum limits. This phenomenon leads to what is known as tunneling. quantum mechanical tunneling. We will not do more than that, when it is necessary we will read, uh, we will worry about this. Calculating tunneling probabilities etcetera is usually done in a standard course on quantum physics, but here when we do with uh, finite one dimensional potentials uh, we will be able to do that. But tunneling is a basic uh, new concept. even though the quantum system uh, is given a specific energy of half h nu, 
the quantum system is likely to be found in areas where as a classical system it is forbidden that is with amplitudes larger than what a classical system would permit that is what is called tunneling. Okay. And what happens as we check this for not just half h nu, but 3 halves, 5 halves, 7 halves and so on. Okay. Does the tunneling persist for uh, if the oscillator has higher and higher energies? The answer is yes, because uh, for larger values I mean of the quantum number, you have a Hermite polynomial which modulates this exponential okay. and therefore, you have more oscillatory features because of the power series and so on. It is oscillatory because this term keeps driving everything down for large values of x. Therefore, even though the power series may tend to increase, the exponential will tend to cut it down to size to be precise and to bring it to 0 for larger and larger values of x. If you put a higher order Fermite polynomial, the function may go to 0 for very large values of x, but not for small values of x. But at the end of the day, the exponential at the end of all of this calculation, the exponential is the master, the Gaussian is the master, kills everybody if you are sufficiently far away from the x. But the point is, it is never 0, <laughs> exactly 0, except at a few points where the polynomials are 0 and also for all points outside of that potential barrier, it, there is still a finite probability. The only nice thing is that as the n increases to large and larger and larger values, the contribution of this probability to the total probability which is the area under this graph, this square graph, the contribution of this segment, these two segments symmetrical okay, is smaller relatively and it goes to 0 as n goes to very large values, meaning tunneling becomes less and less important as the energy of the oscillator increases or the oscillator is tending to behave more and more like a classical harmonic oscillator, which is a Bohr correspondence principle that for very large values of energy that the system, the quantum mechanical system will have all the features of the corresponding classical system and it reaches the behavior of the classical system asymptotically for large values of energy. And that is still true here, but most important at low energies, uh, at low temperatures, the quantum behavior is very striking and therefore, the harmonic oscillator is fundamentally important in uh, being a model different from the particle in a box model, where now you understand that putting an infinite potential barrier ensured that there was no leaking of the probabilities outside of the barrier. This is like a leak in the probability of the system being conserved within this finite region from being conserved within this finite region. And that becomes smaller and smaller as you go higher and higher. Okay, we will just see two forms of the uh, harmonic oscillator wave functions before we stop uh, this part of it and move on. Okay. Let us look at the next one, we will have the potential energy still written like this. Okay. The next we will take a look at uh, 3 halves h nu which is the psi 1 E 1 is equal to this energy is 3 by 2 h nu and psi 1 or n equal to 1 as the functional form psi 1 of x is 1 by 2 2 alpha by pi to the 1 by 4 e to the minus alpha x square by 2 and h 1 of root alpha x, which of course is 2 root alpha x, 2 root alpha x or lumping the constants together root 2 uh, 
alpha to the 3 by 4 pi to the 1 by 4 all of that e to the minus alpha x square by 2 times x. Okay. This is an odd function. It is a psi 1, n is 1, the harmonic, uh, the Hermit polynomial is an odd polynomial. Okay. Since it is an odd function and since it is multiplied by x, if you try to plot psi of x, it starts with 0 because at x is equal to 0, the function is 0 and as x increases, the function increases, okay. but the exponential minus alpha x square by 2 will try to bring it down. So, it reaches a maximum and then it goes down to 0 very quickly. Being an odd function, of course, it has exactly the opposite uh, uh, form, the negative form here. So, let me, sorry, let me draw this carefully. It is like that and if we do that, it sort of goes to 0. Okay. So, this is the function. What is the square of the function? This is psi 1 of x. Okay. The node here is at x is equal to 0 because that is the point where the function is 0 and the only other place where the function is 0 is at x is equal to infinity or minus infinity. So, again here you have the same thing that the function is present outside of the classical potential barrier corresponding to this x max, this x max because this is uh, the value of x max is where the total energy is equal to the potential energy, okay. that is classical. But in quantum mechanics you see that even though the energy is this, the wave function is still outside of that, it is non-zero. What about the square of this? Obviously, the negative side becomes uh, positive and uh, the maxima are at the same place, okay, but it goes to 0 much faster. Still, this part is non-zero as we bring the function here, this part is still non-zero. So, there is an energy, there is a probability component outside of the potential barrier even for this energy of the oscillator which is non-zero, meaning that the oscillator can if we try to find out uh, uh, its wave, its position, the possibility that the oscillator is outside of the potentially forbidden uh, range, classically forbidden range, it can be found, okay. that probability is finite. So, this is the node for the second wave function. Let me plot only one more and then I can illustrate the general trend psi 2 of x. If we look at psi 2 of x is 1 by 2 root 2 alpha by pi to 1 by 4 e to the minus alpha x square by 2 and h 2 of root alpha x is 4 alpha x square minus 2. Okay. If we plot that, well, technically I should plot it some energy here, 5 halves h nu, okay, 5 halves h nu, e 2. If you do that, this function is uh, 4 alpha x square minus 2 goes to 0 at x is equal to 1 by uh, what 1 by root 2 alpha plus or minus yeah so there are two points 
the alpha is of course, the physical parameter associated with the model and therefore, the location of this points will depend on the oscillator itself, what is its mass and what is its uh, depending on its mass and depending on its force constants. Therefore, the alpha is not a fixed point, it is the oscillator dependent point. Okay. Uh, and also at x is equal to 0, the answer is minus 2 times whatever that constant that you have here alpha x square term is 0. So, the oscillator is something like this and it increases, okay. it reaches, uh, let, me, let me draw the function like this and then it increases to a maximum because the x square term will continue to increase will be this whole term will be positive and increasing uh, as x is greater than uh, plus uh, 1 by root 2 alpha or x is less than minus 1 by root 2 alpha. This term is positive, but it keeps increasing, but this guy ensures that the whole thing comes back to 0 and the corresponding uh, it is an even function. Therefore, it looks exactly the same on Now, you can see that f of x is equal to f of minus x. Okay. The way I have drawn it appears that if I take the square of the function psi squared, then the negative part becomes positive, the psi squared becomes like that okay. and the probability increases probability density increases to a larger value and then it comes back to 0 here, okay. increases to a larger value and it comes back to 0. They are symmetrical, both are symmetrical point. The point is this is a smaller segment than the sum of these two, meaning that for larger energy the oscillator in a classical sense, the oscillator spends more time towards the edges, far away distances because you see the potential energy is also very large for larger energies, the x max is large. Therefore, you can see that the oscillator spends more of its time farther away from the center and quantum mechanically also you get the same picture that the, the probability of finding the oscillator farther away from the center is more. But there is always this problem that quantum mechanics tells you that the probability of finding the oscillator near the middle or right uh, where the classically we would say that it spends the least amount of time therefore, it is least likely to be spotted. The quantum mechanics tells you that it is not 0, it is reasonable. Okay. There are things that you have to be worried and it is also dependent on whether it is half h nu the first wave function or second wave function or the third wave function and so on. So, all these quantum wiggles or the quantum properties are so important at low energies, but not at very high energies. Because what happens is if I may draw the picture for a very large n, And uh, if I plot, let us assume that this energy scale is some 100 times or 1000 times uh, that scale and we have a quantum number n equal to say 100 or 200 or whatever. If we do that and we put in the potential energy uh, barrier something like this, okay. what you will see is that for very large n when the energy is given by this this is uh, this is e and also v of x uh, then what you have is you will see depending on odd or even you will see a smaller wiggle slightly a larger wiggle and even larger and even larger and finally this whole thing will come down to 0 how many i have 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 and 5. This segment 
this segment that is outside this region becomes smaller and smaller compared to the probabilities that you compute in this segment. And if you see these oscillations carefully, as you increase the n value to larger and larger, as the oscillator has more and more energies, what you will see here is a nice amplitude which looks like this as the probability, okay? which means the probability of locating the oscillator uh, and the time, relative time that the oscillator spends in the intermediate region in a classical sense, if you compare these two, you will see that they both approach one another as the energy of the oscillator increases to larger and larger values. And finally, you would see when n is so large that you would see this middle oscillation is almost like a non-existent small. Therefore, this graph goes through a minimum, which is exactly what you will get in a classical sense that the time spent by the oscillator at the middle, the relative time is the least. Therefore, the, in a quantum mechanical sense, the oscillator is least likely to be located, probable to be found in that region for very large values of energy. This is the Bohr's uh, correspondence principle that quantum systems and classical systems uh, approach each other or the quantum system behaves more like a classical system as the quantum number increases or as the energy of the quantum system increases relative to the rest of the uh, energies. Okay? So, uh, it has all these very nice uh, features and of course, there is far more to it. Uh, there are other operator methods and so on. But as far as the chemistry is concerned, we will stop at this point with respect to understanding the harmonic oscillator or what are called the basic characteristics. And I shall write you uh, the expression that you must also probably verify the orthogonality and the normalization expression. I know I have written that earlier, but it is worth remembering that when you write the orthogonality property psi m of x, psi m of x, the star is not written here because it is a real function dx which is given by minus infinity to plus infinity 1. Sorry, we have written the normalization constant m, the normalization constant m e to the minus alpha x square h n of root alpha x h m of root alpha x dx and that is equal to delta n m chronic delta. That is when n and m are the same, the oscillator uh, wave function is normalized when the n and the m are different, the oscillator is the wave functions of the oscillator are orthogonal to each other. Okay. So, these are the most important things okay, as far as the harmonic oscillator is concerned. And uh, instead of starting a new lecture, let me stop at this point of uh, this uh, discourse on the basic mathematical characteristics of the harmonic oscillator. In the next lecture, what we would do is to skip this differential equation a little bit and to look at coordinate transformations from uh, Cartesian to spherical polar coordinate systems and then take up the differential equation after we have done a little bit about the hydrogen atom and the transformation of the hydrogen atom Schrodinger equation to spherical polar coordinates. After that, we will take up the differential equation again and then uh, look at the uh, solutions or the angular part of the hydrogen atom and this we will follow with the radial parts of the hydrogen atom. Now, what I would do in the next two or three lectures on the hydrogen atom is slightly more mathematical than what I have earlier done on the hydrogen atom in an engineering chemistry course whose videos have been already uh, there for quite some time. I shall attach those videos to the present set of videos in my lecture notes for those of you who want to have some continuity. These two lectures will appear to have quite a lot of common material, but the algebra is taken uh, a little more uh, in this set of lectures than the introductory lecture that I gave on the engineering chemistry. Therefore, it is important for you to uh, connect 
both of these lectures and put the mathematical details at the appropriate points if you want to. If you do not need the algebraic details, you want just want to know the characteristics of the hydrogen atom solution, then those engineering chemistry lectures with all the animations have them already and I would suggest that you go through the four lectures on the hydrogen atom without much of the mathematics. What I would do in the remaining the next three four lectures on the mathematics is to take uh, us through the algebraic details and also the transformation details and finally the solution uh, in the form of spherical harmonics for the angular part and the log air polynomials and the exponential for the radial part. Rigorously we will derive it uh, rigorously to the extent that the rigor uh, is needed for the physicists and chemists particularly chemists. We will not worry too much about the convergence and other properties. There are of course layers at which you have to stop. So let me stop at this point and we will meet again to study the coordinate transformations uh, from Cartesian to spherical polars in the next lecture. Until then thank you very much.